In 1952, Vespa scooters had been around but their sales were stuck at the lowest point and struggling to compete in the market with Lambretta, their rival brand. Due to interest on debts that Enrico Piaggio, the owner of Vespa, couldn't pay off, a staff from the bank named Rocky Battaglia, who deliberately wanted to claim the company for himself, had been generously giving out loans, but then asked for it to be paid off in a sudden. Enrico's condition was getting complicated after meeting with the man. After leaving the bank, Emrico had to return to the office to listen to the restless voices of his employees who heard rumors that their company was in a crisis. Meanwhile, the female employees were chatting in their office about Audrey Hepburn, the Hollywood megastar at that time who visited Rome to shoot a film entitled Roman Holiday with Gregory Peck, a film about two Americans who are in love in the city of Rome. Enrico who happened to pass by accidentally hear the chitter and then took the newspaper to read the article about it. He then invited his assistant, Adini, and his advertising staff, Suso, to his office. Enrico asked Suso to make a Roman holiday poster with Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck on it with a Colosseum as a background. He had an idea to make Vespa appear in the film, therefore he immediately sent Suso, who was fluent in English, to leave for Rome to try to convince the film director to use Vespa as his shooting property. Shortly after, Suso went to Cinecita, Rome, where the shooting was located. She tried to meet William Wyler, the director. Instead of a warm welcome, Suso's visit was rejected and she was kicked away from the place. That was when she met Peter Panetta, an American journalist who was on duty to cover the shooting activities. Peter had an interview scheduled with Wyler, so Suso used the chance by asking him to convey a message to the director. Peter happily helped and asked her to tell a story about Vespa. It all started after the Second World War, the Piaggio company which was originally a warship manufacturing company was destroyed by bombs. Enrico Piaggio, the son of Ronaldo Piaggio who became the successor to his father's company, tried to revive the legacy. Fortunately, he was helped by workers who remained loyal even though their company had not been able to operate yet. In 1944, Enrico heroically stopped the Nazi troops who were trying to force his employees to undergo military service in Germany. Enrico had to suffer from a gun wound because of his actions. However, he managed to survive and his name became more and more famous among the residents of Pontedera, the small town where they live a city close to the city of Pisa. After the war, the Italian state, with the help of the Allies, created a reconstruction committee to provide assistance to vital companies that were destroyed during the war to help regrowing Italian industry, as well as to trigger the economic cycle in the community. Enrico came to face the chairman of the reconstruction committee. The man stated that the Piaggio family really deserved to be assisted, but that person instead offered to help in a condition. He would try to help disperse massive funding for Piaggio on condition that the funds were divided up by the company. Enrico flatly refused the offer and went out of the office. After he left the office, he met a mother and child who recently attended a meeting there. The mother is Paola, the widow of an Italian military hero who died in the Second World War. Enrico invited them to go home together to Pontedera. On the way, Paola's daughter, Ananella, said that she likes cats, so Enrico decided to invite them to stop by his house first to see the kittens. He happened to have some newborn kittens in his house. After seeing the kittens, he took them to their house. Enrico saw that Antonella, apart from liking cats, also liked to play with a scooter. When Enrico arrived home, he immediately told his brother, Armando, about his meeting with the chairman of the reconstruction committee. They decided to leave the offer by the committee and more focused on their father's words that a true entrepreneur never stops innovating. They then went into the inventory warehouse and checked the items that were still available and could still be used. It turned out that there were some parts for small planes like the landing gear and the starter engines. When asked about the alternative usage of the parts, the mechanic said that it could be used to make small motorbikes that were normally used by Allied troops. A functional but ugly in shape. The Cushman motorbikes. The cargo motorbike which at that time was heavily used by the Allied troops. A meeting was held in the company. Taking into account the devastating infrastructure condition in Italy after the war ended, Enrico invited his staff to consider a simple transportation that was economical and could be used by everyone, but could be assembled using airplane spare parts. Inspired by Ananella, he suggested that they make a motorized scooter, taking Fiat Company, which issued a Fiat Topolino, a compact transportation, as a reference. Enrico proposed a motorbike version with the name Paperino. Unfortunately, Enrico was running out of funding, so he needed to loan from the bank. One day, as usual, Enrico spent the weekend in the countryside, playing tennis together with his colleagues. He also met Livia, his ex-girlfriend from high school. He also met Battaglia, a banker who apparently easily passed his loan, even though the amount was quite large. The reason for Battaglia to do so was because the Piaggio family was a family that had contributed to the city of Pontedera. They couldn't go away forgetting the Piaggio family's services. That night, Enrico and Livia were spending the evening at Enrico's house. Since both of them were already single, 
Livia saw an opportunity to reconcile. They then spent their night together. Behind all this, what Enrico didn't realize was that Battaglia had colluded with the Reconstruction Committee. He deliberately gave Enrico a large loan amount, hoping that Enrico would fail so that they could take over the Piaggio company. Meanwhile, the production of Paperino was then carried out. The prototype was tested together. When Enrico asked Suso to try the motorbike, she was reluctant to do it, the same with another female staff, saying that she didn't want her thighs to be exposed. The problem was the position of the engine that was placed in front. Enrico then angrily asked his employees to redesign it. He then came to the city of Pisa to meet Corradino Descanio, a helicopter engineer he knew. As soon as he arrived, Corradino immediately showed some of his new work. After that, Enrico showed him the picture of the Paparino that he intended to make. Seeing the picture, Corradino refused to help. The reason was that he didn't want to build a machine for a motorcycle. However, because he was forced by Enrico, finally, Corradino was willing to talk about it. Enrico expressed the problem he was facing regarding the prototype, saying that the position of the engine made the steering position less comfortable. He wanted to make a scooter. Hearing the word scooter, Corradino finally came out with a design that had previously been discussed with Ferdinando Innocenti, the owner of the brand Innocenti that would later become a competitor to Vespa, namely Lambretta, which their project didn't work out. In his design, the engine of the scooter was put on the side and was given a cover as the extension to the body, so that the scooter did not look dirty from dripping oil. Enrico immediately liked the design. Corradino asked for time to complete the overall design for the prototype. Unfortunately, before Enrico could continue his prototype, Battaglia came and asked him to pay his loan installment. Enrico was forced to sell a collection of his expensive paintings to cover his debt repayments. One day, Corradino finished the design of the scooter. He immediately arrived at Pontedera to build the prototype he designed. The scooter received no complaints at all. Enrico immediately did a test drive on the street. He went to Paola's house and asked her to come with him to test the scooter. She was given the opportunity to ride it for the first time. Enrico felt that the engine had the sensation of a whistling sound similar to the sound of a bee, so the word Vespa came as the name of the scooter, which in Italian means was. The romantic atmosphere led them to a scene where Enrico kissed Paula. She didn't seem too fond of that and decided to leave him. The Vespa began its mass production. Hearing Enrico's closeness to Paola, Livia became jealous of her. He deliberately seduced Enrico, but she failed miserably since Enrico had fallen in love with Paola. Two months passed, but none of those scooters were selling, and because Enrico couldn't pay his employees' salaries, the company was finally occupied by the workers. Some Protestant, even a major came to protest at his house. They all forced Enrico to hand over his company to the Reconstruction Committee to cover all debts and losses, but Enrico remained in his stance. He didn't want to just let go of the legacy left by his father. He also urged the staff to be more creative in terms of marketing. The remaining money he had left was spent wholly on advertisement. Battaglia and the people from the committee were getting more and more desperate because Enrico was incredibly stubborn. Livia, who found out about their dirty plan, decided to join in after Enrico dumped her. After weeks of being occupied by the workers, one day the electricity and telephone network at the company was cut off. It was Battaglia who did that using his influence. After doing all that, he pretended to care about the problem and gave the option for Enrico to hand over his company instead of bothering to take care of it in court, but Enrico was still on his stance as he refused the option and left him. In the end, Enrico prepared dismissal papers for the protesting employees. However, because he was confused about his decision, he came to Paola's house to share his problem. Enrico said all of his problems said he didn't want to make the wrong decision. Paola didn't want to insult Enrico's decision, and instead told him to believe in his own dream before convincing others to believe in his dream. That moment took their relationship even closer. The next day, Enrico showed up in front of the Protestants that occupied his company. He took out all the dismissal letters that were made by his secretary and burned them down in front of them. Enrico recalled the moment two years ago when he stopped the German soldiers who invaded his company and asked the employees to do the same thing because he was sure that Vespa would skyrocket one day. He prepared a way to apply the installment method for consumers so that they can immediately enjoy their products without having to wait until the savings are sufficient. Enrico asked the employees to be more patient. Thanks to his speech, he was able to convince his employees. Knowing that Piaggio had solved their internal problem, Battaglia was overwhelmed. That was when Livia showed up with her action. That afternoon, she came to the Red Cross headquarters where Paola worked, pretending to give charity. She approached Paola and mentioned Enrico's name in the middle of their conversation. Livia said that Enrico was playboy and that she was his ex. Unexpectedly, Enrico was not like what Livia told her as he showed his sincerity when he proposed to her, and they married soon after. Back to Cinecitta in 1952 when Suso told the story of Vespa to Pierre. Peter was very moved to hear the story he decided to take Suso, 
with him to meet the film director, Weiler, but before they met the director, they met with an allied soldier that came to the place to be a consultant for the production of the film. They then talk about many things until it was revealed that Peter was once an allied pilot that went to the war in Italy and claimed many lives during his service. Suso, whose parents died because of the incident, immediately became irritated. She immediately left from there, abandoning her job. Suso returned to the office in Pontedera and apologized to Enrico for her failure to meet William Wyler. Fortunately, Enrico didn't seem to be mad about it. Soon after, Peter, who was still intrigued by the story of Vespa, came to the office to meet Enrico himself. He was very interested in covering the story of the company that rose after the war to be published in his magazine. Enrico then told a bit about Paggio and later asked Suso to tell the story. Unfortunately, after the incident happened in Sinicida, she couldn't do it and asked to leave because she couldn't stand Peter. Worried because he was shunned by a cute girl, Peter confided in Enrico. Enrico came up with a solution. He told Peter to take one of the Vespa and take Suso for a ride. Enrico then prepared one for them while Peter went to ask Suso to come with him. They then went to ride, but since it was the first time Peter rode a scooter, he couldn't control it very well. Upon seeing the scene, Enrico got an idea. He then called them back to his office to convey his crazy idea and make a scene in the film where two Hollywood actors, Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck, appear in one scene riding their scooter. The idea leaked into Battaglia's hands out of nowhere. He then asked to meet with Peter the very next day and asked to postpone the publication of the article about Vespa until after the Roman holiday shoot was over. He didn't want Vespa to skyrocket after the product got booster exposure since it would be detrimental to him. Peter was offered a big sum of money, but he, fortunately, refused the offer. He even tore up the check in front of Enrico. He was enchanted with Suso and didn't want to make her disappointed. Wondering why confidential information was leaked to Battaglia and Enrico, with the help of Suso and Peter did an investigation to find the traitor, knowing Battaglia must have an informant from inside the company. He suspected one of his staff and fired him immediately. Meanwhile, Livia slandered Enrico by deliberately putting Suso's belongings inside Enrico's car, which later led to a fight between him and Paola. One day, Corradino came to Enrico's office and caught someone on the phone reporting Enrico's family situation. That person turned out to be Enrico's secretary, Terlissi, a senior employee who had been an informant for the bank. The internal affairs could finally be resolved. Enrico then rehired the employee who had been the victim of a false accusation. At that time, an article about Vespa was published in the magazine as an ideal transportation for families, it was the perfect moment for them to offer William Wyler to use a Vespa in his film. They then went to Cinecita to meet the director. When they arrived, a horse-drawn carriage had been prepared to be used in the film scene. Although Wyler admitted that he liked the Vespa product after reading about it in Peter's article, he was still reluctant. They entered the shooting location at that time. William Wyler was checking the department costume while Enrico immediately ordered Peter and Suso to find a Vespa and to get ready in front of the building. Enrico, who had no appointment to meet the director, ignored the restriction by entering the shooting scene and loudly said that the problem in the preparation of the film was not in the costumes but in the properties. He then invited Weiler to go to the front of the building and gave the signal to Peter to start riding his Vespa. They passed in front of Weiler, giving a picture of Italian-style street romance, not by riding a horse carriage but by riding a Vespa. Roman holiday shooting was finally finished and Vespa became the poster of the film in many magazines. In the scene in the film itself, Vespa was driven by the two main actors as Enrico dreamed of. The advertising using the film was very effective because after the release of the film, Vespa was sold for over 100,000 units in a short time and became a trigger for the emergence of Vespa lover communities in throughout Europe to later become a global brand.